Hey guys, welcome back again to this uh, Golang Vue.js web tutorial series. We finally have a server with routes and now we're going to be adding the basic structure we need to essentially authenticate our client-side application. So very soon we'll be getting into Vue, but not quite yet, almost there. So the uh, very first thing we need to do is to allow um, Go to capture um, header information and to be able to post to this server because it is an API so it's disconnected this API this uh, server will not be serving the application uh, disconnecting the two so I uh, it, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using uh, Gorilla's handlers package here to be handling things like cores and uh, logging and whatnot and I've already went ahead and written what's needed for it uh, let me go ahead and uncomment here or uh move forward right so what this function basically is doing is it's basically creating a handler okay that uh, includes the router object that we're gonna be putting in here and it uh, says okay well we can use the get method the put method patch post delete uh, and these are the headers that are going to be accepted right so um, that's and then uh, you can read a little more about what's actually going on here. Uh, basically, the logger handler and some of these other functions they will log to the um, to the console and give you more information about what's actually going on. Um, so now we've uh, appropriately put the router uh, into the handler function, and we're going to pass the handler into the HTTP listen and serve function. But we're actually going to create a new server using the HTTP package from GoLang. Uh, and this allows us to uh, do things like instead of binding to 127, we can bind to any uh, port we want to. Allows us to give a timeout and a read timeout. Um, and then we're going to actually bind that to 0000, which is essentially um, um, any, uh, any uh, Ethernet port or wireless port, anything, any port connected to uh, um, the Internet. Um, and then we're going to pass in... Let's see here, Gorilla Mini Gorilla hand Logging, or uh, Handlers, there we go. We'll save, oop, we'll save that. There we go. And um, we'll create a new server, and then we uh, pass it into log fatal, and uh, we listen and serve. So you'll see here, it should compile and run. And there we go. So we now have a server running that will listen, that will, um, will allow uh, get, put, patch, anything from cross-site requests. So you can disconnect your client-side application from your API. Um, and then we're going to be using the X app token as the header for uh, passing our JWT token. Okay, so let's actually test this. Um, in the last video, I showed you the middleware between um, the sub routes and the standard routes. And we're actually going to, I'm going to show you how headers work. Um, and we're going to pass in uh, this header here and log it so we can see that that when the client sends a request we can attach the header and um, verify that they're authenticated otherwise we'll, otherwise we'll send them to uh, a session login right so let's go ahead and we're going to be doing that in this middleware here because as you recall from last time um, the standard routes are not authenticated so any route uh, in the standard router is not going to be authenticated, but of course our API itself and we're version controlling here uh, needs to be authenticated. So the middleware needs to say, hey, if you don't have this header, you, you know, you got no, you're no good. Get out, right? Um, so uh, well, we're going to need log here, the log package, log, and then you can just quickly do gorilla headers like so. Actually, we'll, we'll you know we'll we'll do this. Um, show you. Um, it is log dot print. Um, print uh, inside v one middleware. Oh, just a second. Hold on. Oh, and we are back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we're going to say r dot print r dot header I, if i remember right i believe that's the way you do it or or don't i can't remember i think it's uh doo -doo -doo -doo. get there we go that's what we need to do um and then we're going to do x app token and then it should compile 
like so, and then we're going to curl to the server, HTTP, uh, local ho oops, local host uh, port uh, 3000, and we're actually going to have a header of X app token, oh, uh, v, v1 now, and status. Status uh, and test, and that should log properly. Oh, and you'll see right there inside v1 middleware and test. So we've curled a request to the server. We've read the header xapp token. So now we can say if this doesn't exist, well, let's we'll actually assign it to a variable first. So we'll say um, token is equal to our header get token like so that and then we can say um, if um, let's see here if length of token is less than one we will re um, we'll do a return we'll do HTTP dot error like so with the writer and we're going to use um, um, not authorized and then we'll use HTTP dot uh, oh, uh, it's, um, authenter not what's that what's that variable it is no it is that's not it gotta find it here No, 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 no. Why am I having such a hard time? Unauthorized. There we go. Status unauthorized. Okay. Otherwise, we'll say, um, hey, you've gotten in. Okay. And of course, clearly you would, you know, verify that and whatnot. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll just test this real quick. We'll say make, like so. Go out here. We will curl inside middleware. You see right there it says inside middleware. So it got past it. But what if we curl... HTTP, localhost uh, 3000, v1, status. It's going to return not authorized. See that? Not authorized. Uh, so you can see that um, you can use headers like so to uh, use for JWT authentication, which is what we're going to be doing. So uh, just a quick recap. Um, we allowed uh, client-side applications to hit our server. Essentially, we added a little bit of logging, and we're actually going to expand on this a little bit more later, but essentially we added logging. We added a few more uh, variables that are useful, uh, timeouts. So you can go ahead and read more about this. Um, we made sure we bound, bound to listen to everything uh, on this machine at that port you know, that we passed in from the environmental variables. And then on the router itself, we look for a token. And then if the token doesn't exist, we say, hey, not authorized. And of course, then we're going to actually create uh, authentication um, with JWT, uh, which is actually the next step. And that video is going to be kind of a longer one um, because JWT authentication is, is slightly complicated. But once we get that done, then we can spin up a basic uh, Vue.js uh, uh, yes, excuse me, Vue .js application that can hit the server. And we'll use Cookie to store the authentication token on the client and wrap everything in Webpack, and we'll have a full working system. We'll have an API that we can have you know, our, our server-side developers work on, and a client-side app with you know, the guys who are awesome at CSS and Vue and whatnot work on that stuff. And uh, there you go. You have a full API um, application. So I hope this made sense, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll do it. We'll do it live right here. I'll uh, actually, let's um, create a GitHub, or a new, this is uh, what, video 7, I believe? So get check out video seven, like so. Oops, make sure we have everything. Okay, send. Uh, there we go. Put in my username and password, which of course my password is password because that's super secure, right? <laughs> uh, that's not really my password. But anyway, um, so there we go. Okay, so if you go on to my GitHub account, it should be there. Video 7, 
with the new code on there. And we can, uh, I'll show you real quick. Uh, boo, and you'll see new code. Cool. Well, I hope that was interesting. And, uh, and um, if you have any questions, please post below. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be doing actual JWT tokens. We're only a few videos away. All right. Thanks, guys.